the prototype series that we have. We're going to start with the quarterbacks. We're going to talk to NFL head coaching legend Mike Holmgren. We got David Carr coming on, Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner. Now looking at these quarterbacks, it's part of our position prototype series that we've been working on all summer. Taking one position, digging in, uh, what do we look for when we evaluate the position, and then ultimately coming up with who we feel is a prototype at the position. So a lot of fun talking about the quarterback position specifically today. I mean, you love the quarterbacks. Everybody talks about it. it's the I'm most important bit, I'm a bit position guilty. on the field. Maybe he's a little biased because he played a position. All right, well, let, let's jump right to it. This is the best of our interviews. Bucky mentioned the guest. You're going to enjoy this, talking about quarterbacks in our position prototype series. All right, Buck, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure when we get to talk to a Hall of Famer and uh, even more than a Hall of Famer, just a, an all-around good dude and a great friend in Kurt Warner. Kurt, uh, first of all, thank you so much for, for taking the time to join us today. My, my first question for you uh, right out the shoot here is uh, you took your last snap in 2009 and where we are in 2018. A lot of things have changed at the quarterback position, <laughs> but I want to start with, with what is the same? What, what was valued then that continues to be extremely valued today? Well, I mean, I think the game from the standpoint of what you're asking a quarterback to do and what's most important, how do you play in the big moments? How do you play third down situations in the red zone when the game is on the line? All those things will never change. It's the most important position in sports, the most important position in our game that those things will never change. I think how you get to those points uh, has changed quite a bit. Um, you know, so much more throwing at the line of scrimmage, so much more run pass options, so much more wide receiver screen. I mean, you've got receivers, uh, you know, back when I played that if they got six or seven targets a game, that was a great game. I mean, now if you get anything short of 12 or 13 targets because half of them are at the line of scrimmage. Um, and I think that's where the game has changed. There's so many more balls being thrown within five yards of the line of scrimmage. But I still think what makes a great quarterback, what makes a difference maker, what, what makes a franchise guy stays the same, and that's how you play in critical moments throughout the course of a game. You know, Kurt, you talk about critical moments and how you perform in big moments. I think that speaks to a player's uh, mental toughness. When you're looking at quarterbacks, how are you able to judge or evaluate a quarterback's mental toughness? Um, well, I mean, I think there's there's – numerous different things you know we just kind of mentioned it there you're right the ability when the game is on the line the ability when you you're laid in your downs or you're late in the game and you find yourself down how do you play in those moments i think the other thing when you look at mental toughness is uh the ability to bounce back from a mistake you know there's certain guys that make a mistake and then they play afraid to make another mistake there's other great quarterbacks that make a mistake and just say i'm not going to make another one but I'm not going to let it change the way I play the game. And I think a great example is uh, you look back to that Monday night game between the Rams and the Chiefs um, last year. And, you know, 50-whatever to 50-whatever. Um, and Patrick Mahomes throws numerous interceptions. And, you know, a lot of times I think people watch that and go, oh, my gosh, he just threw another one. It's like, stop, stop winging it. Stop throwing it around. And I look at that and I go, that's the kind of guy I want, you know. They're gonna have games when they throw five and six interceptions, but they're not afraid to throw five or six interceptions. They're not gonna stop swinging just because they've missed or because they're having an off game. And I think that's a big part of the mental toughness is that no matter what has gone wrong up to this point, I can still make the next throw. I will still find a way to get the job done and get our team in position to win. I think that's a big factor when you're talking about mental toughness. You know, Kurt, you, you speak to the importance of having athleticism at the position. Now, we're talking about movement skills and the like, but we've seen an influx of the super athletes that are kind of kind of coming into the league playing the quarterback position and is different than the quarterbacks that we've traditionally seen. When you look at dual threat throwers or playmakers like a Lamar Jackson or like a Kyler Murray, what's the biggest adjustment that those guys have to make to being able to play the game successfully in the NFL? I think the biggest adjustment I see with a lot of these athletic quarterbacks is they've gotten so far. You know, when I was playing, you know, your athleticism would take you to, you know, maybe junior, senior in high school, maybe freshman in college. And then at some point it was like, okay, that's gone. Now you got to play quarterback. These guys are such great athletes that they get farther and farther and farther, sometimes all the way to the NFL, simply based on athletic ability. And 
they don't learn how to play the quarterback position, the nuances of the quarterback position until much later and sometimes once they get into the NFL. So I believe the biggest transition as I watch a lot of these great athletes and, and playmakers play the position, it's the ability to understand what they're seeing and getting the ball out on time consistently. You know, it's the things that I always say, when you get to the NFL level, you have to be able to, and you mentioned it earlier, Buck, you gotta be able to make the layups. You know, you gotta be able to see and make the throws that you're supposed to make nearly every single time. And, you know, that can be a simple slant route, but it's about throwing it on time. It's about throwing against the right coverage. And what I often see with a lot of these athletes is they're a little bit behind in seeing and anticipating and making those quick decisions because I think they've always relied on, well, I can take a little bit longer, make sure I see it. If it doesn't happen, then I can just create. But they miss a lot of easy things and things that can make the game or the situation easier for them because they're a little bit behind timing-wise uh, is probably the biggest thing I see from just playing the quarterback position for a lot of these young athletes. No doubt. Kurt, we've talked about what we're looking for on the field now. Obviously, a huge component is, is what the makeup is like for players, and leadership is a, is a huge aspect of that. And on the scouting side, you're constantly trying to dig and talk to coaches and teammates to learn about them as leaders, uh, which kind of leads me into a, a little another soundbite here uh, from one of your former teammates, Larry Fitzgerald, talking about a situation he had with you. And I want you to pick it up out of this bite and, and just kind of riff on the importance of leadership at the position. Depending on your personality, he knows how to tweak you. So if you're a guy that can't deal with being criticized, then he's not going to do it. He's going to pat you on the butt. Don't need much. It's all on you. This is what you do. This is what you do. Um, if you're a guy that needs to get jumped on, he'll do that. He would always jump on me, no matter what. We're playing against Seattle Seahawks. I was close to 100 yards. I wanted to get to 100 yards. I was like, Kurt, let me get about six more yards to get to this 100. He looked at me and said, are you trying to win this game, or is this all about you? I'll never forget uh, that moment, um, you know, because, you know, I come here to Arizona and, you know, it was about changing the culture. It was about changing what we believed and what we were trying to accomplish and what was most important. Um, and, you know, it was a time period when Seattle was pretty good with Matt Hasselbeck and kind of owned our division. And we were trying to take that next step and become that team, uh, you know, that would you know kind of own the division for a while. And so we were up in Seattle. Uh, we were beating them late in the game, and uh, yeah, I remember, you know, one of the coaches came over to me first and said, hey, you know, Larry's close to 100 yards and, and you know, wants to get another ball to get over 100, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, here we are trying to just change this thing and get a win, and, and Larry wants to get to 100 yards, so I had to give him a little piece of my mind uh, with that, and as you <laughs> said, it wasn't so much the point of, yeah, I didn't care if we got 100 yards, I didn't care if we threw it to Larry one more time. It was simply just the mindset at that point in the game is that I want guys to forget about the individual at that point. And you want to think about what do we need to do to finish this game and get where we're trying to go. And, and you know, there's no better opportunities as a leader than when one of your other leaders like Larry. I mean, everybody looked up to Larry and rightfully so, the way he plays the game, the way he carries himself, uh, the face of the franchise in Arizona. But that was one of those opportunities that I saw when I was there. And it's like, oh, this is perfect. You know, and no offense to Larry, because I know Larry's going to go out and do his job and he's not necessarily a selfish player. But it was a great opportunity to go, okay, let's use Larry as an example. So every young guy that's standing on the bench, you know, everybody that hears this story knows, okay, this is what we're about. That's fantastic. Awesome. I, I love that. Man, it was fun, guys. Anytime Thank you want you me to so holler Kurt. at me. I love talking ball. All right, Buck, talking quarterbacks, uh, nobody better to talk to than our buddy uh, David Carr, former first overall pick in the National Football League draft. 12 years in the league at the quarterback position. Uh, Dave, first of all, thank you so much uh, for taking some time with us today. I, I guess I want to go back to uh, to your process uh, leading up into the draft. And when we're looking at it from an evaluator standpoint, let's flip it and look at it from a player standpoint. Okay. Uh, what did you feel like, maybe going into your final year there at Fresno State, that you need to show in order to prove that you're worthy of being a, a first overall pick or even a first round pick? Well, it's interesting because I think that what I was trying to show and what they actually wanted to see are probably two different things. <laughs> you know, like when you're when you're a college kid, you, you feel like it's all about the physical. It's all about how hard I can throw the ball, 
how much can I lift, how fast can I run? And you get caught up in that because that's what you that's what you are naturally just thrown into after your last game is okay, we gotta get ready to run fast in a straight line. <laughs> and it, who cares? Like did you watch Tom Brady run? No one cares how fast he is. So I, and, and I didn't I didn't like I didn't really learn what was necessary until several, you know, really I mean, several months later, I'm in the NFL, I figure out, okay, this it doesn't really matter what my forty was today. Did I make the right decisions, right? Did I throw the ball where I was supposed to accurately on time? So I think that's the, the the dilemma that they all have to kind of struggle with. And I remember training with Derek before his um, dr- before the draft with him, before all his workouts. And I'm like, this stuff is all great. And we had a trainer. We had one of my good buddies that was training and running and going through all the drills. But I was like, I got to get you ready to play a football game, like a, a real NFL football game. So it's it's what do you know about the offense? What what can you decipher from what they're showing you? And how can you make the appropriate decisions and throw the ball accurately on time? And so in practice, we would push not just completions, but, you know, we're just out there with me and him and some of his receivers. Throw it as early as you possibly can. Like really push the envelope with timing, right? And and that's going to help you. I used to get caught up in, I'll just wait a little bit longer and throw it harder, right? <laughs> it's like it doesn't help, you know, when you're facing Pro Bowl corners. That's a curse of a strong arm. It really is. And that, and you see guys all around the league now. They still yeah. do it. Like Josh Allen, I don't know if he'll ever have to worry about anticipation. He just wait till he sees it. <laughs> oh, he's over. It. Yeah, cool. yeah, fire it. I want to ask you about this one, Dave. The uh, you know when you're going through the evaluation process, I have my three kind of. You have your non-negotiables, and mm-hmm. and these are the three that I look for. And then I've kind of added a fourth and fifth as a qualifier here. Yeah. I wanted to see if you can fill in a gap for me here okay. in, in terms of what it would take to be successful at the next level. I start with the, the big three from your accuracy, uh, decision making, and poise. Like I, you got to have those three things. If you have accuracy, decision making, and poise, yep. that's the foundation. And then I talk about having enough arm. Like I, I don't need you to have huge arm. But you got to have enough. I mean, yeah. you can't you know, have a little pea shooter out there. You got to be able to to be able to fit balls and windows. So mm-hmm. enough arm. And then I also say enough athleticism. I, I don't need you to be a world class athlete, yeah. but just like Tom, Tom has a, enough athletic ability to be able to sidestep, slide, and, and make a free guy miss at yep. least every now and then. I, I don't need somebody where every time you get a free rusher, you're dead. Yep. Um, so those are the five areas that I look at. Uh, a, what do you think about those five? And then B, where can we really in some gaps there. Well, I actually think it's really good. I was uh, I was thinking about that when I was coming in here. I knew I was going to do your guys' podcast, and we were going to talk about some quarterback stuff. And interestingly enough, your first three are very similar to what I've always kind of believed. And even when I got to New York, we were able to win a Super Bowl with Eli. Uh, Mike Sullivan was the, uh, the offense coordinator. The night before we played the Patriots, he handed us our, our packet. And it was something he always talked about, but on the front page of it was obviously the Super Bowl logo and all this stuff, but it said leadership, decision-making, and accuracy. And so I guess leadership wow. and poise could be kind of similar, and that's it, that kind of can go either way. But that's for good. me, um, the leadership thing can be how you prepare, how you take ownership of your offense, all sorts of intangible things, right? And and that kind of encompasses mm-hmm. the poise too. Like you can't just be out there and you're the leader and you're losing your mind in clutch mm-hmm. situations or making yeah. bad decisions. Like I see experienced quarterbacks all the time, and Tom Coughlin was huge on decision-making, on just knowing situations, and they make – I mean, mm-hmm. 10-year vets just not knowing the clock, not knowing when to burn a timeout, not letting the – I mean, it's just crazy stuff that I see all the time that still happens in today's game. So those first three are actually really good. The decision-making and accuracy, I think that's that's not negotiable. That's 100%. You have to make yeah. the right decisions. You have to know where to throw the football. you got to know when to throw the football. And then you got to be accurate. Like, you can throw it as hard as you want. If it hits the cheerleaders on the sidelines, like, who cares, right? I mean, you got to be able to put it where you want to put it. And then those other two, as far as having enough arm and enough athleticism, Tom Brady is as good as I've ever seen it moving in the pocket subtly, like finding a way to remain a passer and keep his eyes down the field. You can have a free – I've seen free runners at that guy a lot, and he just makes a miss and makes a throw. So, I mean, that's enough athleticism for me. And then having enough arm, that's always the nice thing because, you know, when I talk to different quarterbacks and even when I was playing or I talked to Derek, it's nice to have that cannon – in your back pocket but don't feel like you have to utilize it right if that's ever your strength and you feel like i'm just going to lean on that unless you're throwing it 100 yards and you're josh allen or you're pat mahomes and you can kind of rely on that the majority of the time okay i get that but if it's not that um you gotta you gotta be smart you gotta know where you're throwing the football david one one trait that stands out to me that we haven't talked about but i believe it's essential to being a guy that not only is a franchise quarterback but wins at the highest level confidence 
uh, the best quarterbacks that we've ever been around have kind of an unwavering belief in their self and their ability to get it done. Uh, when you're a young quarterback and you've been thrown out there to the wolves and you're struggling, how hard is it to maintain that confidence so it doesn't kind of cave in on you and you're able yeah. to kind of see it on the other side? It's extremely difficult because this is the most humbling league that there is in all of sports. I mean, you think that you got it figured out. All these guys think that they – everybody thinks they can play quarterback in the NFL, especially all these – I talked to a 14-year-old kid at this USC 7-on-7 <laughs> seven the other day. He can sling it, throws it 100 oh, yards. No. He thinks he's ready. He thinks he's ready. Start talking to him about coverages. The kid has no clue. Like, I'm like, all right, man, I'll see you in a couple of years. You'll, you'll love it. It's a, it's a blast. But but yeah, there, it's it's a very humbling league, and it just it demands. I remember sitting there my first year in Houston, and I had given absolutely everything that I had physically, mentally. I was exhausted. We're like week seven or eight, and I'm like, I got, I have, I don't know what else I can do, right? And we still aren't winning football games. It's extremely difficult. I've played every sport there is. I went snowboarding with my wife the first time. Went right down the hill. She's like, "Oh, you're just a great athlete." I'm like, "Yeah, this is easy compared to what my normal job is. Like, <laughs> this is the hardest thing that you're ever going to try to do. Even guys that are doing absolutely everything they can, right? You still got to have the pieces around you. You got to have it all work together. You got to have the right head coach. I mean, it's just extremely difficult. But man, it's it, it's a blast. I mean, that's why we that's why we love it. Well, you've given us so much of your time. We do appreciate it. I just want to compliment you on one thing here because as I go through it and look through all the notes and, and all your numbers, I have 76 sacks. Okay, whatever. 76 sacks in one year. I don't know how you're still standing. Uh, I'm but sitting, I'm sitting recovering 12 of your own fumbles, bro. Right? 12 fumbles you <laughs> unknown, recovered. Unknown. That's incredible. It's actually an NFL record. I don't want to bring that up. But, I mean, as far as yes. recoveries, that's, yes. that's what I do. So. I, I, I how, how do you even it. know where the ball is? You get Hats wrecked off. You start the blind to get a sense. Side. You ever seen catchers when they dig one out of the dirt and they like, and they're like looking around, panicked? Yeah. I always had look a sense it of where it was. Yeah, like I knew where that ball was. Like I could feel it. So I remember Albert Hainsworth one time. I took the snap and I went to pull away from center and he grabbed my left wrist, like literally beat the center of the guard. And so the ball drops oh out and it's gosh. like underneath me and I literally sit down on top of it. I'm like perfect, second down. <laughs> <laughs> That is fantastic. Yeah, when that drill, I imagine in practice when they want to do the cover-up drills where they roll the ball and you got to yeah. get in the uh, fetal position. I was on You're it, like, dude, dude I, I've got enough practice. I'm like I'm NFL good. record holder right here, bro. Let me just show you guys how to do this. <laughs> un unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Great chat. Uh. DJ, I'm always excited when I get to bring on one of my former head coaches, someone that I not only played for, but I had the opportunity to work with with the Seattle Seahawks, play for him with the Green Bay Packers. We're going to bring on Super Bowl winning head coach Mike Holmgren. Let's talk about young quarterbacks and what are the, I guess, two or three traits that you look for in young quarterbacks that would make a Mike Holmgren interested in developing that quarterback to eventually maybe be your starter? The first thing, he's got to throw the ball. He's got to be able to complete passes, be accurate, and make all the throws. That's the first thing. Second thing was his movement. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be his running ability, but his movement in the pocket and the ability to avoid, and then also to get a first down if necessary. And third, and this may be more important, but it's tough to judge, it's just his mental toughness and how he's going to deal with adversity, how he's going to be a leader with his team, all those types of things are a little more subjective. The longer you're around him, you get a better feel. But you have to make that decision early and hope you're right. Is there one guy out there you look at and say, man, I, I would love to have the opportunity to coach that young man? Well, I'm going to state the obvious here, and you know who I'm going to say <laughs> is, is Mahomes. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. I love watching him play. And, uh, you know, he reminds me a little bit of Farb. Uh, and then the fact that he'll start doing stuff and, you know, the old thing, no, no, you're yelling from the side and, oh, yeah, and, and, and it works out okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, Coach, now, I, I've, been awesome. on the, I've been on the sideline when you've had some of those epic uh, interactions with Brett Favre. Are you all right? Yeah. No more rocket well, balls, please. Are you sure that you could deal with some of the uh, – off the cuff sandlot stuff that Pat Mahomes brings. I know that you'd say that, oh, I would love to coach him, but I remember back in the day, Brett would drive you crazy sometimes with some of the impromptu plays that he would make on the field. Now, Bucky, when I agreed to this interview, <laughs> you know, you promised me you wouldn't bring up any of those crazy moments. I, I don't want people to ruin, I don't want my image ruined, you know? <laughs> it, was, it was a challenge, and we went through some tough love situations. There's no question about that. Doggone it! But, he, I had more fun coaching him than, than anybody, honestly. He was, uh, he so enjoyed playing the game. <clears throat> and you can have your moments where you get after him a little bit, 
but then ultimately you knew that, gosh, this guy, is, this, he's special. You know, Coach, you did a great job, not only with Brett Favre leading into three MVPs, a Super Bowl title, and have another Super Bowl appearance, but so many other quarterbacks that you touch, and then the great coaching tree. Thanks so much for sharing a little knowledge with us on the Move the Sticks podcast. All right, Buck. Well, you want to talk quarterbacks. It doesn't get any better than those guests right there. So talk about great quarterbacks and those that have been around great quarterbacks. No, it's a unique perspective from all of those guys. I mean, David Carr comes to the league as the number one uh, overall pick, has some success in the league. Kurt Warner is a guy that was cast off. Undrafted. Uh, uh, undrafted, an afterthought. He makes his way into being a Hall of Fame player. And then Cone Trongham, who has been around the most successful quarterbacks that you can think about being around and the success that he had individually as a coach and being able to lead his team to a Super Bowl. So being able to get all those unique perspectives on the most important position in the game certainly helped me increase my football IQ when it comes to evaluating that position. Uh, no doubt. All right, we're talking prototypes, though, and we got to throw out some names. Who you feel is uh, the prototype at the position today, Buck? I'll give you maybe one or two names here. Who's the prototype? Well, I'm going to go right now in the league. It has to be Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes is the reigning MVP. You're talking about a guy that can do anything and everything at the position. He can run around and make plays. He can throw the ball literally out of the stadium, <laughs> and he's done it on is a that necessary this offseason. Just to let everybody know how strong the arm is, but the no look passes, the splash plays, all those things we've seen him do. And I can say we didn't see this coming when he was coming out of Texas Tech, but for him to quickly become maybe the best quarterback in the game early in his career says a lot. He has to be the new prototype at the position. I don't want to brag, but I could throw the ball out of the App State Stadium out of the visitor's side. There's a little, <laughs> really low, low bleachers there. I can get it up nice, get right, right up over the top. So come on, Pat, what's the big deal? Throw it out of the stadium. We can all do that. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Andrew Luck as my prototype. Uh, reason being, look, it's the highest grade I've ever given to a quarterback coming through the draft process and having a chance to study him when he's healthy. And we got a chance to see that last year, Buck, with him healthy on the football field. I don't know what he can't do. And I think from the pocket right now, he's just a little further advanced than Pat Mahomes is with what he can do because he's got more experience. Oh, absolutely. He does have more experience and he's a guy. But I think the GOAT of all GOATs would have to be Tom Brady when we think about the prototype. And Tom Brady is the prototype, not necessarily – uh, from what he does physically, but the way that he plays the game, the cerebral nature, the way that he's able to consistently deliver in the clutch, that is the definition of a franchise quarterback. And so if I'm going to talk about a prototype who I would want to be the guy that is my quarterback of the franchise, I want Tom Brady because Tom Brady is the ultimate winner. That is ultimately who I want to be the QB1 of my team. I can't argue with that one. Tom Brady, or look. Is there any? There's not even a debate anymore. No, is, there, is anybody really no debating debate. that? No, they're not debating that No, nah, he's the GOAT. He is the greatest of all time. Click here to subscribe to the NFL YouTube channel and, and click here to subscribe to the Move the Sticks podcast.